Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and in today's episode we are checking out the Sim Update 11 and the 40th Flight Simulator Anniversary. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. Okay, guys, this particular episode is more of a news and informational, so again, feel free to minimize if you choose. I'm not going to be displaying a whole lot today. We're just going to be talking quite a bit, telling you what to expect with today's update. We have some new performance features with the simulator. We have a bunch of new aircraft, some new events, airport changes. We have a fully modeled, true-to-life, quote-unquote, A310-300 series aircraft, uh, so a new airliner that has been coming. We have new training missions for the... Uh, um, gliders there are now actual glider training missions to help you guys get started uh so there is a ton of really awesome stuff that has happened with this latest update and today we're going to sort of break things down by we're first we're going to talk about some of the new features then we're going to talk about some performance changes and then i'm going to give you guys a heads up on what you can expect from the channel over the next few days we are going to be cranking video videos out guys we're going to be going back to back to back to back um, I would imagine my release schedule is probably going to be looking something like three or four videos a day, if not more, depending on what's going on. I'm going to do my best to showcase all the new features and all of the new aircraft that are available with inside the simulator. So make sure you guys stick close to the channel. If you're not subscribed, still many of my viewers, unfortunately, are not subscribed. Guys, it really does help us out a lot. Um, so make sure to ring that bell for future notification. Hit that subscribe button and join the family. And uh, stay tuned because we have a ton of things coming over the next few days for Microsoft Flight Simulator. All right, so first up, let's take a look at the 40th anniversary highlights. We have seven classic aircraft that have now been added to the simulator. We have the 1903 Wright Flyer, guys, at the beginning, the, the start of the story, the first page. Uh, it has been joined in with Microsoft Flight Simulator, the 1915 Curtis JN4 Jenny, the 1927 Ryan NYP Spirit of, of Luis, um, the 1935 DC-3, a 37 Grumman G21. Now, the G21 has me a little back and forth because there was already a freeware version, uh, but we'll definitely take Lucy Goosey once again, and we're definitely going to check out the differences between this version and the version that I already have. 1947 Haviland DHC2 Beaver. We talked about that one a while back when it was first announced in the news, so it'd be interesting to finally see it uh, um, in action. And then finally, I was blown away when I first heard about this one coming to the sim. I have stayed quiet on purpose. It will probably be the first aircraft that we check out, guys, and that is the 1947 Hughes H4 Hercules, also known as the Spruce Goose. So super excited that that was brought to the sim. Like first, how do you even model that? But I, we're gonna find all that out, right? We have two helicopters. We have the Gimbal Cabri G2 and the Bell 407. Now, why is this a big deal? Mike, we've already had helicopters. Yes, we have had helicopters, but every single helicopter that's currently existed in the simulator, they've had to find workarounds in order to make them work because the simulator SDK and the environment didn't natively support helicopter traffic, meaning the for things like a vertical ring state, auto rotation, the proper lift angles uh, of the rotors. Um, and now all of that's been added and much, much more. Uh, there are a ton of different uh, visual options you can actually turn on in the sim to see how the rotors and how the, the helicopter effect is actually working inside the simulator. I don't know if we're going to get into that. We'll probably just get up and fly it and see what the difference is and see how well improved it is. We've got some pretty big names to go up against. The H-135, the H-45, the uh, um, Raven 2. Um, there are a ton of different helicopters that are already in the simulator that are truly an amazing experience. However, Things moving forward here, this should be a really, really big smile for all of you listening here on this. The fact that it is now natively supported with inside the simulator means that, for example, the uh, Bell 47 from, uh, gosh, I always get their freaking name wrong, um, but you guys know who I'm talking about. I get their name wrong every time, so I'm not going to butcher it this time. Um, 
they have their own application. Um, many of the other helicopters that were in the sim had to use the, um, you know what? I got to look it up. The third party application that allowed us to induce the, uh, or, or create the, um, Airland FS. There it is. Airland FS that actually created the flight model and the flight dynamics for the helicopters. All of those things are no longer going to be needed. The only one who's really done it natively, well, you got two actually, I guess, technically is, uh, obviously we have the, um, High performance group with their H145, H135 series. They didn't require any third party applications in order to function. And then lately, uh, with the most recent release of the Miltech Osprey, the Osprey still operates under those same restrictions. And so, what we should see now is we should see a massive improvement on how all these helicopters are implemented. Hopefully, all these developers go back and say, all right, well, now that it's really in the sim, let's push Airland FS aside. And, and it's not to say that Airland FS isn't fat, fantastic. Uh, it was super helpful and really brought an experience to the sim that wasn't available. Um, hopefully now that won't be necessary anymore. Now we have two new sailplanes, also known as gliders, the DG aviation LS eight 18 and the DG 1001 echo Neo. Um, now I don't know enough about sailplanes to get into a big conversation about that, but I would absolutely be checking them out. Cause I did have a lot of fun with the gliders, uh, that we have available, uh, currently. Now, um, here's the big one, one true to life airland that is quote from the Pashtos, the Airbus A310-300. Okay. So we're going to be checking that out as the days go on, uh, four iconic airports, Hong Kong, Kai Tak, uh, Meg's field in Chicago. And this one really caught my attention. Princess Juliana international airport at St. Martin. Now, the reason why the Princess Juliana one is a big one is because you would had to previously buy third party airport uh, scenery in order to truly make it true to life. You know, for those of you who are unfamiliar, Princess Juliana is that one where you always see on YouTube where people are screaming or airliners are screaming right over the uh, fence line as beachgoers are hanging onto the fence and being blasted off it by their engine exhaust. You know, so uh, that's a really fun airport. It's really uh, it's one of those like goals that every time you fly into Princess Juliana, uh, you got it. And I think it's uh, Tango Foxtrot Charlie November, if I remember correctly. TFCM um, is the uh, ICAO there. But it's always a challenge. Like when you're coming in on that final approach, you got to be like, all right, how low to the fence can I get it without destroying my simulator? All right. So really cool to hear. Uh, I was really happy to see that one. 24 classic activities previous from uh, flight or from pre previous flight simulator titles. Uh, so your FSX and all of your versions previous P3D any of those that had any of those uh, old activities that were created for those simulators have now been migrated over to the new one and seven new tutorial missions for the gliders as we discussed previously um, that that was coming. So very cool stuff. So now we're going to talk about some new features. We'll go over a few bug fixes. Um, and then we'll talk about some navigation traffic, some weather adjustments, um, and then we'll probably get into um, uh, talking about what the release schedule is going to be of some videos coming up. So let's go ahead and get into that. Okay, so real quick on some new features. Live traffic has been updated with various quality of life fixes. Um, there are details down below that basically iron out that the, the live traffic behavior is not so intrusive as it used to be. Um, we talked about this one previously in the news over the last week, a uh, new memory defragmentation system has been implemented for DX 12 to limit maxed out VRAM. What this means is that the RAM being acquired by the simulator will no longer exceed the RAM that is actually capable of being supported. What this essentially does guys is it will stop some of the crash to desktops when using direct X 12. This is what we would call it's very similar as a memory leak is what the issue was, where the required memory being pulled by a specific application is higher than that. Once it reaches that point, it reaches a point where it's higher than the RAM available. And again, that can cause a crash to desktop and cause in this particular case, most likely it would cause the uh, graphics drivers to crash and you find yourself back at the desktop and possibly having to reboot if the video card drivers didn't automatically restart. Um, so this is a big one. That's a very wonderful thing. Um, some, you can now use your, uh, directional pad on an Xbox controller or, uh, arrow keys on your keyboard to navigate through the various menus within inside the simulator. Uh, AMD FS R2 graphics option is now available for P, uh, PC now. So that's going to be very similar to like DLSS, um, where it is going to scale the image down, render it, and then scale it back up, um, to hopefully save some frame rates. 
uh, and that's going to be specific to NVIDIA graphics cards or uh, excuse me, AMD graphics cards. I'm sorry. Speaking of NVIDIA graphics cards, DLSS 3 uh, is now available with inside the simulator. Again, further including or further improving upon the DLSS and DLLA um, super sampling methods. So that should help some of you uh, who are maybe struggling with frame rate. Improved atmospheric simulation with a big focus on thermals and general tweaks uh, for the flight dynamics. Um, so again, good stuff happening there. Uh, there was one in particular that I did want to talk about. 3D thermal visualization can now be toggled from the weather panel. And I will be showing that later on, but that's gonna be real helpful for things like glider flights. You'll actually be able to see, excuse me, where the thermals are and uh, get an idea of how to start practicing staying inside them when you're doing your flying in the glider. Now, this obviously wouldn't be something that you'd want to leave on all the time, but as you're learning, it will certainly be very, very helpful to be able to identify those and see what the impact is and see what your flight pattern is looking like in relationship to those thermals. So, and then find a new mapping for the back to fly feature, including height gain, uh, depending on the plane situation and current altitude below uh, 10,000 or 1,000, 5,000 and 10,000 feet allowing to quickly adjust your flight in a variety of contexts. Uh, very useful during glider runs if you do not wish to restart the flight after having landed. I agree with that, it's pretty awesome. Moving straight into some of the general bug fixes that have been adjusted. Again, I'm not gonna go through all of these, but we are gonna talk about quite a few. Uh, several crashes have been fixed across the title. You know, they mentioned that in almost all the patches, which is wonderful. You know, as they continue to knock those out, that's great. Ongoing performance optimization work, including Cursor improvements in the world map. Thank goodness. I am super excited for that one. I cannot tell you, and I hope this resolves the issue that I am constantly dealing with where you try to click on a parking spot uh, to select your starting point and the mouse just keeps jumping across the screen. It is so obnoxious when that happens. Uh, fixed graphical artifacts on cockpit screens using DirectX 12. That was a big one. That's why a lot of people switched back. Um, and fixed broken rendering of rainbows. I actually did see that. Uh, I saw a rainbow split in half and it was all jagged on one side. So that was very interesting. Uh, that I've only seen it once, but I did see it. Center of gravity is no longer shown outside of the limits when there is a lateral imbalance. Um, and then let's see here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. There was one other one that I saw here that I wanted to mention. I do highly recommend that you guys read through all of these uh, notes as well. At the very least, skim through them. Uh, HDR10 is now properly applied when launching the title in full screen mode on PC. Uh, so those of you who have the HDR monitors, you will finally be able to benefit that in its fullest. And let's see here, there was one other one that caught my attention, I thought. Nope, I guess not. All right, so moving down to navigation and traffic. Uh, Copilot will no longer request the pushback service when he's only managing ATC service, ATC service. goodness gracious. Um, and let's see here, fix a scenario where some ILS were misaligned. Now we talked about these, um, in the previous Sim Update 11 video where we talked about some of the things to expect. Now, this is a really nice one and a very big one. Um, again, LAX at 24 left had an issue where it would kick you off to the left side of the runway. Um, and then some missing procedures are also now in the Sim. So things that weren't even there have been added. So awesome sauce there. Uh, we obviously want to make sure the ILS is working properly, especially if you're trying to fly in a low visibility situation. That would be bad. Um, fix an issue with ATC being on the wrong airport when having a VFR flight plan and landing on another airport. I have experienced this. This was, I think, actually probably one of my final straws to uh, working with the in-game ATC. Now, it may be time to revisit it and check it out. Maybe we'll do that this week. We'll see what happens. But uh, the in-game ATC has just put a bitter taste in my mouth that it's really hard for me uh, to be willing to engage with it again. Uh, ATC UI is now enabled with COM radio for planes lacking nav radios. So there you go on that. And this was one of the ones that we were talking about as far as some of the changes to live traffic. Live traffic planes will no longer turn and fly over the airport at low altitude uh, before the initial climb. Uh, that was insane. It, it was like they were racing and doing some sort of dogfight maneuver. Um, so that's pretty awesome. And then added departure procedures to air traffic, meaning that your simulated uh, or live traffic, excuse me, will actually now honor the uh, departure procedures currently being in use by that particular airport. So again, should make things look significantly more realistic and further enhance the immersion experience of using the live traffic. 
fix live traffic cruise altitudes. They'll now actually be at the correct altitudes. I have ran into that before. Uh, a lot of these things are the reasons why I turned my live traffic off too. So this is kind of uh, comforting for me to see this. Um, and let's see here. Wind direction information is applied before selecting the runway for live traffic. Yes, 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 yes. What this means is that the uh, you sh when you are obeying the current MEDAR system and taking off from the correct runway, you should no longer have a 747 staring you in the face as you're making your run down the runway for departure. Um, <laughs> they will actually now be taking off from the correct runways based on the uh, wind direction. So score on that one as well. Again, these were all immersion breakers and the reason why I turned my live traffic off. So I'm super excited to hear this. So far, this is shaping up to be a very, very good update. Um, and then there was one other one that caught my attention that I wanted you guys to see. I mean, again, make sure that you guys take a peruse through these. Nope, lost it. Guess not. Maybe that was maybe that was last one. That was a big one for me. Uh, was live traffic not using the correct uh, runway based on weather? That was so obnoxious. Um, and again, it's just like it's an immersion killer, and, and that's what simulation's all about—is immersion, right? Added meet meet our interpolation every ten minutes to avoid haze apparitions being too abrupt. Okay, so what that essentially means is that the weather and actually these next two are going to be sort of in junction with each other. Actually, next three. Let's just talk about weather for a second. So what they're going to be doing with live weather now is instead of just instantly changing as new meter information ap appears, instead of just boom, the weather changes, right? You're flying along and, and we've all experienced it. You're flying your tooling and then the aircraft just jolts and settles back in for a second. But what happened there is that the live weather changed. The new information was gathered and the simulator adjusted. Wind direction changed, barometric pressure changed, all that. And so your plane just takes this thunk of like, what the hell was that? Okay, so what they've done now is now they're gonna spread that timing out. As they retrieve new information, they're going to have the simulator slowly adjust the directions of things and the overall weather environment. Now, with certain things that will still be instant, we all know wind can absolutely change direction very rapidly. Uh, so it really depends on the scenario, but like the haze apparitions they were talking about, where you'd be flying along and all of a sudden just boom, there was this light haze right in front of you. Like it would literally just snap into view, okay? That's not gonna happen anymore. So what's gonna happen now is they're gonna slowly uh, work its way into your field of view where it looks like it's just slowly generating. So that is uh, pretty nice. Uh, I'm super excited about that. And I don't use the presets, but for some of you who do, the clear sky preset is now truly clear skies, meaning that all clouds have been removed. So I am very excited about the weather changes. Again, every time they do things like that, what that's gonna do is that's gonna make it much more realistic in the way that you plot your flight and you plan your altitudes and you plan your approach based on the windage and overall weather activity. And you won't have any sudden weird, massive changes in the performance of the environment around you that cause you to go, what the heck was that? Right. You know, now if it, now that's not to be mistaken for things like wind gusts and, and uh, shifts and things like that, it can absolutely happen. If that's what happened with the meter, that's probably what you're still going to feel in the sim. So be ready for that. A real quick adjustment on activity. There is now a wing commander uh, functionality or uh, excuse me, achievement that you can now get um, after passing 1000 flight hours. Um, man, I hope that counts. I hope that's going uh, retroactive because I'm pretty sure I've hit that by now for sure. Um, getting into planes, uh, there's quite a few adjustments. I'm not going to go through most of these. Uh, I do highly recommend that you guys read through them though. Um, and the reason being is that there are very specific changes that, and a lot of these changes are going to be people who are looking for something very specific. Okay. Um, and so that's why I'm keeping that out of the particular, out of this particular video. Um, but there are a couple that we'll highlight here. All right. So now I'll go over a few of the highlights for the changes in the aircraft, uh, fix an issue that would cause more sound to not work properly on some planes. I will absolutely admit that it is kind of cool when you tune into a VOR or something like that. Um, to he actually hear the uh, the beacon. Um, so I'll agree with that one. I I'm okay with that one. I'm actually okay with all of them to be truthful. <laughs> I'm just trying to sound like it matters. It really doesn't. Um, anyway, uh, fix some scenarios where we could have camera glitches when flying under bridges. <laughs> I wish I could say that I wasn't guilty of that, but I totally am. Uh, fix a scenario where clicking and manually dragging the zoom slider did not change the level of zoom at all or in all camera options, cockpit, external, or showcase. I have been there. 
So that was a few, um, especially as a con gosh, dang hiccups. Um, as a content creator, uh, added electric engines. That was another big one. For example, like even the gliders, uh, a couple of the gliders have electric motors in them. So, um, definitely helps out. Uh, let's see here. There was another one that I wanted you guys to be aware of. Do, 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 do. Where are you? Icing slider no longer affects aircraft body and windows when icing is deactivated from the assistance menu. Seen that. Okay. And then let's see here. There was another one. Fill. Oh, smooth ground, normal and ground position CFD simulation to make ground effect smoother. So ground effect. Okay. Uh, when you guys are, when we're either in that uh, final landing phase, right before the wheels touch the ground, that sort of pillow of air that we sit in, um, it's never been particularly good if you ask my opinion. So I'm sort of hoping that this makes a big change to that. Uh, thermal simulation now simulates uh, ground slope orientation. So the thermals are actually going to change position and orientation based on the slope of, for example, a mountainside that you might be flying next to um, and therefore uh, change the effect of the thermal. So pretty awesome. Um, and that also means if, if, I'm, if I'm understanding that right, then we should also see temperature uh, or thermal variances based on uh, how far or how uh, high up a mountainside or a cliffside, whatever it may be that you are. So that could be interesting as well. Uh, ground effect in uh, CFD simulation now accounts for objects, helipads, rooftops, etc. Which means, so if you were landing on a rooftop, for example, I know we've all done it with the helicopters, and it has, for example, um, maybe a giant AC unit or something next to it, uh, that ground effect should shift, and you should actually feel that ground effect a bit sooner, assuming that you're coming over that AC unit or nearby it. Um, so, kind of excited about that. Um, again, we're going to have all, so much to test with the helicopters, guys. There's going to be so many different things to experience. It's going to be a ton of fun. I cannot wait. <clears throat> Excuse me. And let's see here. There was one other one. Oh, here we go. Improved the ground heat based thermals for better balance of up and down drafts. Again, so some better weather impact uh, based on those thermals for the up and the down drafts of, uh, you know, wind coming up and down mountainside slopes, etc. Um, so that should be um, something that we definitely start to experience while flying now. The biggest things that I wanted to point out there, guys, was simply all of the changes to the environmental aspect of flying these aircraft in the simulation. We should see some pretty significant changes as we go to flying around. And that's the, the key points that I wanted to hit. This one I have experienced and with all of these new knee boards and different tracking apps, I did want to mention fix an issue where having multiple active Bing map graphics could cause a crash to desktop while getting elevation data under high load. So. Again, now you can have multiple sources of being traffic uh, or being satellite imagery open at the same time. And then there was a few aircraft specific adjustments, um, which I will leave for you guys. But for example, one of them being the Cessna 172 G 1000, uh, the stall speed was 10 knots slower than what it should have been. And that has been adjusted. So uh, airport fixes. This is pretty awesome. Uh, fixed the trees in the path of runway one zero at TFFJ. For those of you who don't know, TFFJ is the infamous St. Bart's. Um, it is the one with the very steep approach on the one way one zero. You basically scream right over a, uh, a street side road top and then lack of better terminology. You dive down for runway one zero and hope you get her down before you run out. It's a very, very short runway, very, very challenging runway. Again, just uh, go to YouTube and, and search TFFJ St. Bart's and I promise you'll know what we're talking about. Um, and so one of the biggest issues was that, that the simulator by default had a whole bunch of trees uh, at the top of the approach line for runway one zero and they should not have been there. Um, I actually had to use a third party scenery package in order to get that resolved. Um, where it sounds like now I don't need to anymore. So awesome stuff. Few other, uh, runway adjustments. Again, I highly recommend you guys take a look at this in case there are any runways that are specific to you. The run at TFFJ is the one that caught my attention. Uh, I fly there very frequently. It is a fun approach. I have tried it in multiple different aircraft, a ton of peripheral changes again, based on your respective, uh, flight equipment. I, I recommend that you guys take a look at the patch notes and see if there are any of these that are adjusted for you uh, based on the type of hardware that you have. 
Now, one of the things that I do want to talk about is at, there are now dedicated helicopter inputs. There is a back to fly feature that can now be mapped inputs and uh, uh, excuse me, increase and decrease for the spoilers now have digital inputs. You now have access to a toggle water ballast uh, releasing the tow plane option uh, plasma control inputs. I imagine that's for the uh, I can't think of the name of it right now. Uh, the Pelican. Um, and then a few other uh, things that you guys can actually toggle. For example, the thermal displays, if you want to actually toggle that, as well as the audio for the barometer, um, which is the uh, um, a part of the glider flight. Toby Eye Tracker 5 should no longer stop working when changing windows. So it sounds like they fixed a bug with that. Uh, I know that Toby uh, Eye Tracker is becoming a very, very popular piece of hardware. I am thinking about giving it a run. We'll just have to see. I'm pretty happy with my track IR configurations, but we'll see what happens. Maybe that will change as time goes on. And then a few VR fixes. I will let you guys uh, peruse through. Nothing too crazy, uh, but it does sound like um, that overall experience has been made a bit smoother as well. Uh, everything else goes through the SDK and things like that. Uh, so if you guys are interested in the development aspect of the simulator, then by all means, check that out. Again, guys, this is just the icing on the cake. This is the first of many videos that will likely be released just today. Um, and uh, so stay tuned because we're going to be flying like crazy. And the next one, we will definitely be checking out the Spruce Goose. So stick around for that. As always, guys, stay safe and healthy. And I truly hope to see you in the next one.